Well, good evening, everyone. What do I say every time I come? Something's different? I think it's real different. But it's a good different. And I like it. You guys have done well. And it's a testament to how the Holy Spirit has been inspiring you now for a number of years. Where you started in the humble abode of Jamie's Rectory. With how many people? Seven, eight? Nineteen. Nineteen. Then we move over to Lava Hill, down that way. And it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. To the point where we needed to move to a new space. Or you needed to move to a new space. And that is a testament to how the Holy Spirit works. In the first reading, for those who didn't know the Spanish, it's the Corinthians where the Spirit delves out many gifts in different and wholesome ministries, so to speak, to gifts of people that can do certain things but not to others. And some people can do this, some people can do that. Our Father Jamie here is blessed with a beautiful voice. That's not me. <laughs> That's not how it works. But I was blessed with the gift of being able to do liturgy very well. And all of our brothers and sisters here all have certain gifts as well that they bring to the table. And the other part of that Corinthians reading talks about how without everyone coming together to be able to do the work of God, it won't work. It falls flat. It doesn't come together in a cohesive mix. It doesn't quite mesh, so to speak. And it's important that, just as your name says, Holy Family, we all work as a family. Granted, there's times where families, people will squabble about things here and there, but you know what? That's good. That's healthy. That's, that's how the Spirit works in us and how we get inflamed to go ahead and do more things, to be able to go out and push ourselves, push ourselves further out of our boundaries, as we say, our stressor zones somewhat. And that's always a good thing. I'm reminded by that because one of the classes that my wife and I have been taking for the last three years about our weight loss says we have our comfort zone, we have our stretch zone, and we have our stress zone. And that comfort zone for us was not doing much. We just walked maybe a few hundred yards at best. So we pushed ourselves in, out of our comfort zone into our stretch zone to be able to walk a little bit further. And as time went on, what used to be our stress zone is now our comfort zone, which is four miles a day. That's why when you saw my wife last and myself, former image of myself. And that's a good thing. And why I say that is because the spirit within us pushes us, pushes us beyond our limits sometimes. But you know what? God's limits are not our limits because God knows how much we can take. God knows just how much that we should get pushed before it's like, no, no, I can't do this anymore. And that's okay. Because as we continue to push ourselves, we grow. And we grow and we grow to the point where we're able to take on the world. In our gospel tonight, Matthew, or I, well, John, right? It's not, it's not in front of my face. I mean, I've been a long day. <laughs> um, that spirit dwells within us. It gives us the ways to be able to do the work that God wishes us. But yet, that same drive sometimes isn't for good. And that's not of God. We have to make that distinction. Our free will sometimes pushes us in ways that maybe the mind says we should go, but the heart and the spirit pulls against. It's our job to be able to Draw that line in the sand and let the spirit move us and not let the head and the mind move us. Because when we let that spirit dwell within us and to move us and make us inspired and make us grow, that is what God wants us to do. And I bring that up because it's not just for my priests and deacons and all those who are ordained. It's for each and every one of you out there. We've all been baptized, maybe all been confirmed. 
And for those who haven't, well, I come twice a year to do that. But being baptized puts us into the royal priesthood of Christ. It's not a free pass to just sit out there and do nothing. This community is one that has to go out, pound the pavement. We don't have that great reputation that the other church has on the big hill that they'll just come because over the years, the guilt says you have to come. That's not who we are. We have to go out and get people to come. We have to go out and minister to those who have not been ministered to. And we have to go out and love all of God's people. That is what the Spirit calls us to do. That is what the Spirit inspires us to do. And that is what founded this church, the American Catholic Church in the United States, which you are a part of. Our founding Archbishop's vision was to love and serve all of God's people. And each and every one of my priests back here and deacons know that because during their ordination, when I laid hands on them, they were reminded that that's what their job is to do. We are a church without walls. We are a church without boundaries. We are a church that's outside of that box because that box stifles growth. We are part of that whole conglomerate. All of our many gifts that the Spirit gives us to be able to pull them all together to be able to do God's bidding, God's mission, which is to serve and love all of God's people. I say that again because as we all know with what we hear in the news and all of the bad things that we keep hearing about how divided we all are, I still have hope that that division is only because the mind wants us to be divided. We all come from God. We're all created in His image. We all have that spirit. Whether the flame is burning or it's just a flicker, it's still there. It's our job to literally throw gasoline on that flame and make it roar. It is all of our jobs to be able to do that. To see all of God's people who are hurting and bring them here. Or minister them to yourselves. Just go out and love God's people. For each person we love, that's one less person who hates. And if we keep up that momentum, maybe we can make effectual change. Maybe with God's willingness and God's spirit and God's love, we can change the tide of what's going on in our world today. I said at the beginning that this is a special weekend because our brothers and sisters of our Lutheran faith are celebrating their 500th year of the Reformation. And tomorrow night we're going to have a special liturgy called Reformers of the Church. And it's not just for our Lutheran brothers and sisters, it's for all of us. Because we all can reform the church, which are God's people. All of us make a difference, just as Paul said. All of our many gifts, all of our many things that come together, and through God's love and inspiration, with that Holy Spirit, we can move mountains. May God bless you, give you peace, and be with you all.